YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. So today, I'd like to show you, I'm gonna plug this here, Supra. I'm gonna plug it. Um, eventually I'm gonna give it away, but I think for now we're gonna plug it and I just wanna do a little experiment and try to uh, re-drill it, roll it again, and see if it even becomes usable for me. But plugging a ball is a good way to save yourself some money instead of having to buy a new one. So I bought this little grip puller. Now you don't need this. You can use a flathead screwdriver. That's what I used to use. This just makes it a little easier. Sometimes you can get them out so clean you could reuse them, but I don't reuse them. All right, you see all that rubber it's stuck on the sides? I'm gonna try to get all that off. One thing I find pretty useful are these X-Acto knives. You kind of just get right in there. Get rid of it. Don't worry if you cut into the ball a little bit because you're plugging it anyway. Once you get the bulk of it with the X-Acto knife, you can just use this piece of sandpaper with your finger or you can get one of these it's just handy just get down in there get anything else off and rough it up in there real good the the epoxy you want you want some teeth for it to to bite into so you, you really want to rough it up good in there, all the way down to the bottom of the hole if you can. And then I will try to do this beveled edge as well. Now just get all the dust out. nice and clean I mean it could be there all day you'll never get I mean you want to try to get as much of it off see there's still I can still see a little bit see mostly you have to worry about up here this first like three quarters of an inch or inch where it's gonna be you know the uh, the resin from the ball meeting the plug down at the bottom is not as important I mean it is important but up here at the surface is where it's gonna fail all right so now we're gonna move on to the resin and the coloring So these colorings I got from Vice and it's like super concentrated color but this is just flat color there's no uh, 
You know how that has that pearlized look? And it came with some of this pearl paste, but I've noticed like it doesn't matter how much of the stuff you put in there, it just doesn't give it that shiny, pearly look. So what I did, and you'll never get it exact, I've you really have to have a lot of colors and it doesn't need to be spot on as long as it's close and it's not an eyesore. It's not a big deal. So I've got I got these artisan pigments. And instead of like a, a liquid, it's mica powder. Let me see if I can find one that really. This has that shiny. Maybe it's too much with the light, but this has that shiny pigment in it. So a lot of times I'll try to use some of this and then this ball looks dark bluish purple so I don't know. What do you think? A little bit of that mixed with a little bit of that should be good. So that's what I'm going with for this one. But yeah this stuff it's like I don't know 10 bucks and you get this whole box and there's tons of colors in here. Tons. I mean, this this whole... I just scooped off a couple off the top. They have gold and copper and bronze and oranges and all sorts of colors. So, yeah, for like 10 or 15 bucks. Nice little add-on. So, also, you want to do this in one pour at least each finger, one pour. So at the bowling alley, I've had a few people give me balls and say, hey, uh, I had this plugged at a pro shop and it's failing and it's all falling apart. And I noticed that they did one pour, you know, up to the surface with just colorless uh, epoxy. And then they'll color just the top, you know, three quarters or, or an inch. So they had a cold seam in between those two layers and it wasn't it just wasn't a good bond and the top always cracked and fell apart. So I, I would go in with a a router and just try to cut out as much of the cancer as I could and then I would refill them. And so far I haven't had any complaints, so I'm thinking that's the better way to do it. And I, I mean, I used to go crazy too and take a drill bit and drill little holes sideways so that the resin could go into those crap, the little cracks and really grab, but I don't know. I think that's a bit much now that I see how strong this stuff is. As long as you scuff it up really good, you shouldn't have a problem. Now, you can buy online, they sell these dams for bowling balls you put the dam on and then you pour your liquid or your resin up past the top of the ball so you can flush it up afterwards so you always want to go a little heavy and they sell these dams and they're super expensive so I'm using some plumber's putty from the depot Just take some, and you don't you don't waste that much either. Because once this is poured, I'll come and scrape off this putty and throw it right back in there and keep using it. So it will last. All right, and it sticks very nicely to the ball too, which is, because it's like a sticky putty. All right, just, you got to make sure that you push it all down real good. Make sure it's seated everywhere. Nicey nice. See that? 
It's not going anywhere. So now you want to have the ball straight up and down. And now we're going to mix up some risen. So I'm using uh, Easy Wizard or whatever it is, Quick Plug. And you've got your, your Part A and the Hardener. It's a 50-50 mix. But um, as soon as you open these bottles, they have a shelf life. I think it's like a year, so, or it might be two years. So you just, so this one has some stuck at the bottom, so. I kind of have to uh, guesstimate a little bit. So this is why I use two cups because it's when they're brand new it's easy to measure but after that one starts getting caked up man it's really hard so before I put in the part B I'm gonna mix the coloring in now to put in but yeah that looks good little scoop get some uh, throwaway mixing sticks Obviously, we're going to be adding a whole another half, so this color is going to it's going to weaken a little bit because we're adding we're adding a little more sauce to the mixture. All right, now let's give it some. This stuff goes a long way, so like a drop or two. Oh yeah, dude! Can you see that? That looks pretty good. Not perfect, but. All right. Now we're gonna go with the part B into a separate cup. So I can kinda keep track. Alright, so now we're going to mix these together for a little while until we start to feel some heat in our hand. And if you need to make any last minute color adjustments, you know, you can do it real quick, but you want to make sure that you scrape scrape all the sides get the bottom okay I'm starting to feel the heat and now we pour There it is. You don't want to stand this straight up in the trash. 
It'll be hard in a couple minutes. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for a little bit. As soon as that hardens, I'll come back and we'll uh, finish the process. All right. It's dry. It's still a little warm. I usually try to wait till it, it's mostly cool, but I think we're good. You just don't want it too soft. So I just take a flathead screwdriver and try to scrape out as much of the putty as we can. Just keeps it from clogging up the uh, the router. Less mess we have to deal with. You see that? You can get most of it back off. And it's perfectly clean. You could use this again and again and again. So we're going to go down to the, the basement and I'm just going to show you up close what I'm going to be doing. So I took my Milwaukee palm router from work and I took off the standard router plate that it comes with and I got a four inch PVC plumbing cap from Home Depot I cut a hole in the middle I placed the one that comes with the router on it so I could mark out the screw positions once you have the screw positions marked, you just drill a hole. And then, you know, I don't even bother putting all four screws in because this is going to be on for like 10 minutes and that's coming right back off. So, two screws, all you need. Any router bit that's flat going across the top doesn't matter that it's angled in because we're not going that deep we're just concerned about this very tip if you could get a router bit that has a curve and yeah I don't even know that that would be good I just I just stick with these it's flat and you don't want it too wide you want it fairly small the smaller the better like the skinnier the better but uh this is the only sharp one that I got at the moment so Hopefully it will do. So then you place your your guide back on. And you want to cut out most of the sides, just leaving these two edges. And I, I did cut this down this way too, because it was too deep. So I cut it down, and then I cut out these two side ports so that when you're sliding over... When you're sliding over, you see that? You gotta be able to slide over that. So, I'll go to somewhere clean on the ball. Set the router on. And lower the bit down. Until it just barely touches. See, it's not touching right now, but I would rather do a pass, check it, and if I have to drop it just another hair, I'll drop it again. But I don't want to be too deep and 
have to fill it again. So we're going to go down, run the router over it, then take a few files if we need to, just to clean anything up. And then we're going to throw it on the spinner, polish it back up, and then we'll come back upstairs. Do this as close to the floor as possible so it doesn't spray everywhere. See, not deep enough yet. I'm going to start off with some 180. Damage straight up. Oh, might need to file that off first. So this is going to take a while because I got to keep running back and forth to the sink because these pads are going to clog up a lot. When you're in the heavier grits like 180, 360, 500, they clog. So I'm just going to go from 180 back to 5,000 and then I'll see you guys upstairs. All right. She is done. There's the finished product. That's not too bad on a color match. I must say so myself. You're always gonna see them. You're always gonna see them, no matter what you do. You're always gonna see them, but that's, that's not too bad. I mean, it's a slight shade off, but what do you think? Yeah, so that's that's how I plug a ball at home. 
I mean, there's there's many ways to skin the cat if you don't have a, a palm router. Maybe you have a, a shop router kicking around. You know, you can make that little thing. Or, if you don't mind the little extra elbow grease, you could get like a rasp and knock off the, the bulk of it and then go back with a, a file and then hit it with the sandpaper. But that's a, that's a lot of elbow grease. But, so I sanded this with, uh, I went 180, 360, 500, then I shot up to about 1,000, and then I went straight to 5,000. I wanted to leave some of the deeper scratches in the ball, and it might be really hard to get them on camera. Maybe you can see some of them right there a little bit. But with this new Motive cover stock, the new Pearl cover stock, it is super clean. So it needs no help getting down the lane. It'll get there on its own. It needs help in the back. So I think this is gonna, if I put a, a stronger layout on this, I think this ball might actually work for me, but I don't know yet. I'm still waiting. I still said I was going to give this away, and I'm still going to give it away. So now it's plugged and ready to go. So leave me a comment. Yeah, so that's it. That's how I do it. Make sure you uh, subscribe. Leave a thumbs up on the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.